Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel and welcome to today's webinar which is on talking what to expect when and how to help. My name is Hannah and I'm one of the speech and language therapists who works in Ealing. Lovely to have you with us today and thank you for choosing to watch our webinar. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so here we go. So today we are going to be covering how does communication develop? How does learning more than one language affect language development? What difficulties you should be looking out for? And what you can do to support your child or the children you work with's communication? And what advice should you be giving to families if you're a practitioner? And what other support is available out there for you to access? So my first question is, what is communication? So what I want you to do is, I'm going to get you thinking straight away, is to have a think about what is communication? What do I mean by communication? What, what happens when we communicate? What things do we use or what do we, what is communication? So if you've got a pen and paper, I want you to just write down now, write down three ideas about what what does communication, what is that to you? What does that mean? What do we use? Okay, I'll let you write that down now. Okay, brilliant. So hopefully you've got some ideas written down and I'm going to go through a few of mine now. So communication is lots of things. It could be the gestures we're using or how we're using our hands or how we're using our face. It could be the words we're using the sentences we say, the types of words we choo to choose to use, the types of sentences we choo to choose to use, how we say those words. It could be our facial expression. It could be our pointing. It also could be our thoughts and what we're thinking about what we're going to say and what we're thinking about a situation and then what things we might add to that. And it's also in the modern age, Virtual communication, isn't it? It's texting, it's emailing, it's Facebook, it's, it's all of those things. So communication is much more than just the words we use. OK, so there's lots of other things that are involved in communication. So I want you to remember that, and think about that to start with, OK? And if you haven't got all my ideas written down, feel free to add them to yours now. And later in today's training, we're going to think about how you or we as adults can adapt our communication so that we can make the most supportive environment. So we can be the most supportive communication partners possible for children's language development. It's all about how we adapt our communication. OK, my next question, get you thinking, is why do we communicate? So I want you to write down at least three, again, reasons for why we communicate. Why do we need to communicate or why do we communicate in our daily lives? So write down some answers now for me and then I'm going to give you some answers. OK, let me see what you've got and I'll see what I've got. So I've got lots of different reasons. You might not have as many as me. So I have got, oh, I have got responding to people sharing interests, protesting or refusing, negotiating, greeting people, saying hello, goodbye, asking questions. Where are you going? Who's that? What do you like doing? To say how I'm feeling, to show me something, to tell people what I want and to pretend and imagine and dream about things. <laughs> There's so many different reasons why we communicate. I don't think I've got all of them down there. You probably have other things too. So we just need to remember that we don't just communicate to get what we want or to show people things. We communicate all the time in our lives for a variety of different reasons. And that's what we need to help the children we work with do as well. We need to help give them the power to do all of those things, not just showing them, showing us what they want. We, they need to be able to do all of the things that we can do. 
So the why is really important because that's really powerful. And that's why mine and your jobs is so important. And that's why everyone who's with children, parents, teachers, anyone is really important to get them to do all of these things. OK, great thinking. OK, so now we've got one more activity before I start talking a lot <laughs> about how does communication develop? So what I want you to do is I want you to have a think about how you think communication develops and I'm going to give you some clues. So I have got a tree and then I have got some different areas that I want you to put on my tree. So I want you to think which areas might go at the very bottom of the tree, which areas might be the roots, which areas might be the trunk, the next things that develop, and then which areas might be the, the leaves or the very, very top of the tree. Um, so have a look at all of those things now and um, put them in the order that you think they go. So have a think about where they might develop, which might be the first things and which might be the very, very last things to develop. Have a go at putting them in the order now. If you want to draw the tree, feel free. <laughs> um, but if you just want to write them where you think they might go, then give that a go. OK, so I'll let you do that now. Pause me and do that now. And then you can unpause me when you're done. OK, so hopefully you're done and you've put them in the order on the tree. So let me show you where they go. OK, so here's my lovely tree. Um, so at the very bottom of the tree, we have got attention and listening, play and social motivation. So attention and listening is the ability to concentrate on tasks and people with more and more independence. So from a very young age, children learn to stop and look at someone or stop and listen to someone. And that is them developing their attention and listening. You need to be able to stop and listen before you can develop the rest of your communication skills because the listening part's really important to learn the words. <laughs> Otherwise, you can't hear or learn the words. And then children also learn through play when they're very young. So they don't learn through sitting at a table doing activities. They learn through playing and exploring and um, playing and having a great time with things. And then also at the very bottom of the tree is social skills or social motivation. So we as very, very, very small babies learn to interact with our, our caregivers and other people around us by smiling, by sharing our facial expression and by that, um, that want and that, that need to communicate. So we, we develop that at a very young age. That is the very first things to come. And then we have understanding. So you children learn to understand a word before they can say it. OK, so understanding is the ability to follow what someone is saying and to make sense of the grammar and the words that are being used. So next then comes talking. We learn how to talk in words in sentences and conversations. And obviously conversations does not happen overnight, <laughs> but we that talking takes a little while and takes time. But that comes next. And then the very last thing to develop is our clear speech sounds and our fluency. So children um, are, often are often making speech sound errors or difficulties. They often have difficulties pronouncing certain words until a little bit later on in their speech and language development, because that's the very last thing to develop. So the, having clear speech is the very last thing on the tree, the very last thing to develop. And importantly, we can't do any of this without lots of praise from those around us because it's really hard. Learning to talk is tricky and we need lots of opportunities to communicate. We need lots of chances to communicate because we need that. We need we need lots of different chances or lots of different opportunities to communicate. And that's where we as adults come in because children need that. So that's the general um, like growing of speech and language development of communication on the tree and we like using this poster and this um, the tree because it shows how communication develops in a nice really clear way we're also going to go through some ages and stages in a few slides so you can also use that as well and this is just a nice way just to remember 
where you think maybe the communication is breaking down or um, what level you think the child might be at, like where in their development are they right now? Okay, so we know there's different areas of speech and language development and speech and language like we've just spoken about. So um, for practitioners watching this, it's really important to know the difference between different parts of it. So the understanding of language is a child or our ability to make sense of words and grammar being used. So um, when someone says an instruction to a child, do they understand it? Can they follow it? Can they understand what's being said to them? The use of language is the talking. That's like the ability to form a sentence, to, to use the different words, use the different vocabulary. Speech is the pronunciation of sounds and words. And then social skills is our nonverbal and our verbal communication, which help us interact with others for lots of different reasons. So social skills is not just about the talking. Social skills is about all the other things too, the knowing when to talk or the knowing how to talk or when to use our hands, when to change our face, when to use good eye contact. So there's lots of different areas of communication. And if you're watching this as a practitioner, it's really good to know maybe what area you think your child you're working with might be struggling with or might be finding easy. So have a think about which part it might be. And if you're a parent, it's also good to think about that. So you know which area you need to you need to work on, you need to get a bit of support with. OK, and a really important thing about communication development is that communication is two way. So a child attempts to communicate or a child attempts to say something or do something. And in order for them to learn communication and develop their communication, they need to have an adult's response or an adult's feedback. They need the adult to respond and they need the adult to give them something to show them that, yes, that was the right word or no, it was like this instead. So when a child attempts to communicate, we have to respond as an adult using our lovely strategies, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. Um, so a key thing is it's two way. A child can't do it on their own. They need us to help them. They need us to give them the words to help them develop their communication. So remember that adults, you're really important. OK, so now we're going to talk about how does learning more than one language affect language development? And you might have already done another webinar on this. If you have, you're going to be very good. <laughs> OK, so let's have a think about children who are learning more than one language and let's do some true or false questions to get us thinking. OK, so my first true or false question is. Parents of bilingual children should be encouraged to speak to their child in English. Do you think that is true or false? Write down your answer now. And the answer is false. So parents of children of bilingual children should be encouraged to speak in whichever language they feel most confident and comfortable. It doesn't have to be English. My next question. Mixing words from different languages or code switching when talking is OK. What do you think? The answer to that is true. So we we all do that. We all can switch, uh, change like words in our sentences or do whole sentences in one language and then another sentence in another language. That is totally OK. Um, so mixing words from other languages and different languages is OK. There are more bilingual speakers in the world than monolingual speakers. What do you think? True or false? It's true. There are more bilingual speakers in the world. One more. Having another language at home affects a child's ability to learn English at school. What do you think? True or false? The answer to that is false. Totally false. So having another language at home does not affect a child's ability to learn English at school. Another one. 
In bilingual families, one parent should speak one language to the child and the other parent should speak the other language to a child to avoid confusing them. What do you think? That one is false. So however bilingual families want to speak with their child, that is absolutely fine. What we say, like I said on the first one, is we encourage bilingual families to speak to their children in whichever language they feel most confident and comfortable. So however they want to do it is completely okay. And however you do it, you will not confuse your child. So however you want to talk with your child in whichever language you want to do it is absolutely fine. And I've got one last one. It is okay for a child to respond to you in a different language. And the answer to that is true. <laughs> so children or who adults or whoever can definitely respond to you in a different language. If you say something in one language, they might reply to you in another. And that's OK. That's totally OK. That's in fact amazing. <laughs> so it's OK for them to respond to you in a different language. So that's our true and false quiz. Well done, everyone. If you're a practitioner, that might be a really good quiz to do with your staff just to get them thinking about bilingualism and what, what they should be looking out for and what things are normal, because we know there's lots of talk around that. OK, so we know that bilingualism is an advantage. It is linked to strong educational outcomes and life outcomes. So we strongly encourage parents to sing, chat, read, play, joke, have fun in your home language because that is the language that you feel most confident and comfortable with. And it is really important that children feel part of their heritage and their culture and that they can uh, share experiences with different members of their family and to keep, keep everyone's home language alive. So a really useful thing for uh, parents to do at home or nurseries to do is to, to talk about words that they're learning at the nursery or at school and then parents can talk about those things in their home language at home and that will really help the child's language development. So bilingualism is really good and a strong advantage so definitely promote children and everyone to keep talking whichever language they feel most confident and comfortable. That's really important. If you're interested in that, then we have another webinar on speaking another language. Feel free to give that a watch too. That is if you're interested in that subject. OK, so we've thought about learning more than one language. Now let's think about what difficulties should I be looking out for? So first of all, what we're going to do is going to have a look at some milestones and some ages and stages and what what children should be doing at certain ages. OK, so our first um, ages and stages are for 15 to 18 months. So let's think about what we think the children should be doing at each of those stages. And all of these stages are taken from the talking point stages of speech and language development. We will put the link to that in the bio underneath this video so you can click on it if you uh, think that would be useful for you. So by about 15 months, children should be saying about 10 single words, but these might not be clear. And they should be things that they hear or see every day, like dada, mama, those kind of things. They should be reaching or pointing to something that they want whilst making a noise. They should be able to understand single words and they should be able to understand some simple instructions like give it to daddy or give me the cup or uh, open the door. And they should enjoy being with familiar adults. By about 18 months, children should be saying words that they hear a lot in their own way consistently. So they should be those single word, 10 single words that they had before. They should be saying those a lot now because they hear those words a lot. So they should be saying those a lot. They should have about 20 single words correctly. But again, they might not be clear. They should be using a lot of babbling. So a lot of noise like ba 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 ma 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 ga 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 from their mouth. And they should be using that those noises and the single words that they know when they're playing. They should be understanding simple words and phrases. 
They should be pointing at familiar objects when you ask. So uh, show me the cup. Where is the cup? Where is your teddy? They should be pointing at those things and they should start to enjoy doing some pretend play like pretending to talk on the phone or uh, pretending to cook something. They should be starting to enjoy that pretending like make believe play. And then by about age two, they should be using about 50 single words and they should be understanding lots and lots of words and lots of different instructions. So remember when we looked at the tree earlier, we said that understanding happens before talking. So this is a key point when you're about age two. So at about age two, children should understand much more than they can say. So they should be able to understand lots of different instructions and lots of different words that you give them. And they should start be starting to put two words together like daddy gone or bye mummy or big truck or open door. They should start to understand simple questions like where or who. They should start to enjoy pretend play even more, even more than before, like doing the cooking or playing with cars. Um, they should ask questions quite a bit as well. So they should maybe be asking the names of people or the name, the, what, what is that object or what's that or who's that? And at this age, they might also become frustrated if they can't be understood. And this might result in some tantrums at age two. That's not a myth, that's true. So they might get frustrated because they can understand a lot of what's happening, but they might not be able to reply. They might not be able to say the words back to you. So they, that might make them get quite upset and frustrated. And then by about age three, you can see there's quite a big jump there. This is when what we call the explosion of language time. So they should, their, their language should be exploding between the ages of two and three. So by age three, children should be using about 300 or more words. They should be speaking in sentences of about three to five words. They should be asking who, what, where questions. They should be understanding phrases like put your teddy in the box or give the cup to daddy. They should be interested in others and they should want to join in and play. They should be able to hold a little conversation, but it might jump around from topic to topic and that's OK. <laughs> they might stammer when they're thinking about what to say. Um, so they might, uh, their words might uh, get a bit jumbled or they might um, repeat the first sound of a word and that's totally normal. And they should be easily understood by unfamiliar and familiar people. So by about three and a half, anyone meeting your child should be able to understand them. They should be able to understand what they're saying or what they're trying to say. Let's have a look at four and five. So by four, whoa, you can see we've exploded. We've exploded in language. By about four, children should be using sentences of about four to six words. They might still have difficulties with irregular words. So they might say, I run to the park or I swimmed with mummy instead of ran or swam. They should be able to start telling you longer stories and those stories get more and more complicated. <laughs> They should be able to understand instructions with two parts. So get your jumper and stand by the door. Or get your cup and fill it with juice, right? With two different parts. They should be able to understand and follow those kind of instructions. And they should start to understand why questions. So why did that happen? Or why are you feeling like that? And they should start conversations. They should love having conversations by about age four. They should really want to chat and be really wanting to start lots of conversations all of the time. And then by five, well, by five, they are well on their way to having an amazing speech and language development. So they should be using well-formed sentences. They should be using language, oh, like we said at the beginning, to negotiate, to give their opinions, to discuss feelings. They should definitely be easily understood by all adults and friends. Anyone who meets the child should be able to understand and know what they're saying. 
They should be la starting to laugh at some jokes. They should be able to follow instructions without stopping what they're doing and looking. So they should be able to carry on doing what they're doing, listen to the instruction and then carry on. And that's really important for when children go to school. Um, and they might still have a few immaturities in their speech with longer words. So you might notice five-year-olds might say things like uh, the elephant, the elephant, or the the butterfly, or the butterfly, uh, or the hippotamus, or the hippopotamus. <laughs> so when there's longer words, the children might still be finding those a little bit tricky. But the majority of words, we should be able to understand what they're saying by aged five. So, as I said, all of these things are taken from the talking point stages of speech and language development. We will put the link below and feel free to have a look if you want more detail about each age. But these are our key things that we're looking out for at each age. So then what difficulties should we be looking out for? So if you are worried about a child and you think maybe they're not meeting some of those things that we just went through, what should you be looking out for? So. These are what we call our alarm bells or things where we are thinking we do not want to wait and see. We want to put some strategies in place and probably refer to speech and language therapy immediately. So the first thing is no words being used at 18 months. That's really important because um, if children aren't starting to use words at 18 months, we're starting to think, OK, we're going to need some support and some help here, because remember, they should be using about those 10 to 20 words that we were talking about. If they appear to not understand what is being said to them by 18 months, because remember, they should be understanding those simple instructions or single words and starting to be able to follow them. If they are using less than 50 words at two years old, and that can be in a mixture of languages. So they might have uh, 25 in one language and 30 in another. Brilliant. So we have to count both of the languages, that all, all of the languages, all or both of the languages that the children are speaking. And we need to work out, is that more or less than 50 words at about two years old? And if they are not joining words together at two and a half, then I would be a little bit concerned. If they are not being relatively easily understood by three and a half. So remember, we said that by about three, three and a half, um, an unfamiliar adult, someone who doesn't know the child, should be able to understand what the child is saying. So if your child or the child you're working with is not easily understood by three and a half, then we might need to think about a referral. And if the child has not spoken in a setting for six weeks or more, and that might be a sign that the child has speaking anxiety or selective mutism because we know all children need to be able to speak freely in their settings. So that might be an area of concern too. So if a child that you are working with or your child is showing any of these alarm bells, we do not want you to wait and see. We want you to seek advice from healthcare professionals or from the educational setting and put in place some strategies and some things to support your child because these are really important that we, they need to get support at this level. So let's think about how to do that. So for parents, if you are worried about a child, you can discuss any of your concerns with your health visitor at your two year check. And any professional working with your child can refer to speech and language therapy. Anybody who is working with your child can do that. If you are in Ealing, if you're watching this from Ealing, then referrals for children under five need to be completed on an EHAP and any professional working with your child can do that as well. If you are not sure if your child needs support or have a question about their communication and you are in Ealing, then you can contact us on our advice line email, which is there, and we are more than happy to help. If you are a practitioner and you are thinking about how can you raise concerns with parents, what can you do? Then here is our little checklist of things that you can do. First of all, ask parents about their concerns. See if they share your concerns. Find out how the child is communicating at home in their home language if they are bilingual. Um, and share, gather and share evidence of the child's progress with, with the child's parents. 
and make sure we share some strengths as well as difficulties because I guarantee there are some things that are going well. There is always things that are going well. And it is really important that parents and school need to work in partnership. So we need to arrange a meeting and then regular meetings to make a plan about how we're going to support the child, both at nursery and at home, because the child is in both the settings quite a lot of the time. So the child needs support in both of those places. So nursery and school need to work together and there needs to be a dialogue between both school and parents about how we can work together. And then if a child in your setting is showing any of the alarm bells or you're concerned about them, you can discuss with parents making a referral to speech and language therapy and discuss how you're going to support the child. If uh, parents do not share your concerns or have a different perspective, sometimes the child's doing really well at home or sometimes parents feel like they're maybe not so worried, you can make a plan together and suggest maybe other support or things that they can access. And it's just really important that both settings, both parents and school work together. Even if parents aren't concerned or school aren't concerned, that, then everybody work together to make sure we're all doing the same thing at the same time. And ultimately, the sooner you raise concerns, the better outcomes for the child. So there is no point being that emu that you can kind of see and burying your head in the sand because that's not going to help. So the sooner you raise concerns, the better. And the sooner we talk about what support we're going to put in place, the better outcomes for the child. We have another YouTube video about uh, how to raise concerns with parents, if that is something you might find useful. OK, so now we're going to think about what can I do to support my child's communication development and what advice should I be giving to families? So my first thing is a little quiz. So um, let's think a little bit about screen time before we think about what strategies we should be doing. So I want you to uh, have a read of those questions and answer them the best you can. So what do you think is the maximum recommended amount of TV a child under two should watch per day? And then what is the maximum recommended amount of TV a child under five should watch per day? So write down your answer now, what you think that might be, and then I'll give you my answer. OK, so for the first one for a child under two, the maximum recommended amount is A, 30 minutes. And then for question two, for a child under five, it is B, one hour. So that is important to remember because we know that too much screen time can have a negative effect on children's speech and language development. So um, we know it can get in the way of them developing good attention and listening and communication and concentration skills. So what is really important as step number one is thinking about if you know that you and your child or you know that a child in your setting is watching a lot of TV or having a lot of screen time, then have a chat to the parents and have a think about how you could reduce that screen time. So um, a useful thing that you could do if you are watching TV with your child or if you, um, yeah, if that is something that your child absolutely loves to do and that is their thing they love, then you can talk to them while you are uh, watching the TV because you are then providing that two way communication. Um, because otherwise the TV or the iPad or the YouTube or anything is just talking at your child. It doesn't give them the opportunity to respond. So if you are talking with your child about the programme or about what they're doing, then that is more useful than them just watching it. So if you are, if they are watching TV or use iPad or whatever, then choose programmes that are designed for their age, have simple language, have opportunities for them to respond, have songs and stories, and have people using their hands and gestures. We know that TV is part of everyone's life, we know. Um, so those are our handy hints about how to make it um, more accessible for children. But just remember that reducing screen time will support with speech and language development and remembering those facts about uh, for a child under two, 
it's recommended that they watch no more than 30 minutes and a child under five is no more than one hour. OK. So that's screen time now. So now we're going to think about the fact that communication is two way. And children learn how to communicate by listening and noticing the adult's response or the adult's feedback. OK, so how do we do that? So what we want you to do is think about introducing special time. So special time is a time for you and your child or you and the child in your nursery setting to play together in addition to the times you already have, not instead of. <laughs> and it is about five to ten minutes of quality time with your child with no distractions. So no TV, no, no half hanging the washing out, no doing the washing up. It's just you playing with your child with no distractions and you are focusing on everything that your child is doing and your communication strategies. And you are talking about things that you are doing together right now, not about things that happened in the past or things that are going to happen. You talk about what they're doing right now in the here and now, OK? And let your child choose what they want to play with and let them lead the play. So you follow what they're doing, kind of like follow the leader. You follow what they're doing and let them choose. Ideally, they don't choose an iPad or anything like that. <laughs> Ideally, they choose something that you can play with together. So try and steer them away from the TV and the iPad. Try and get them to choose something else. But if if that is the only thing they choose, that is OK. We can use the strategies with that too. OK, so you, you're going to introduce special time, five to ten minutes a day. And then what are you going to do? Let me show you. So what we want you to do is to remember owling. OK, so owling stands for observe, wait and listen. So the first thing is observe. And what I want you to do is to let the child lead the play, as that is what interests them the most. And if you show an interest in what they are doing and you talk about that, then they are more likely to respond rather than you choosing something that you think they might want to play with, but you don't know. They need to choose what they want to play with. OK, so observe. So watch your child sit opposite them and look at what are they doing? How are they trying to communicate? Let your child do what interests them. Follow their lead. So you're just watching them to start with. OK, watch what they're doing and how they're trying to communicate. Then you need to wait. And you need to wait for about 10 seconds. That might feel like an eternity, OK? <laughs> and that's OK. So you need to wait. You need to be face to face. So we're sat facing them. They can see our face. We can say that, see their face. Try not to say anything. You're observing and you're waiting. You lean forward to show that you are interested. And if you if you are waiting, it gives the child time to start the interaction. They might say something to you or they might hold something up to you or they might show you something. You never know. So wait, observe, wait and then listen. So listen and look closely at what everything your child is doing and then interpret what you might see. So I want you to look at their facial expression, their eye contact, their gesture, their body movement, their touch, their vocalizations, the sounds they're making. So look at what they're trying to do and think. What are they trying to say? What are they trying to do right now? So look at everything that they're doing. And then so you've observed, you've waited, you've listened. And all of that you probably do in around 30 seconds. OK, so but that's really important to do that to start with so that you know what level you need to go in at and that you have let the child lead and show you what they want to do. So then once you've done that, you can then start doing the five finger rule, which means say what you can see. OK, so we want you to do a comment, a comment, a comment, a comment, and then you can ask a question if you want to. But we don't want to ask too many questions because they're not as helpful. So I want you to describe and say what you can see the child is doing. So if they were playing with a car, you might say oh, a car, a red car, oh, the 
car is racing. The car is going really fast. Brum, brum, the car's moving. <gasps> so I say what I can see. I say what I can see the child doing. Notice I didn't ask any questions there. And then I want you to add a word to what your child is saying. So if your child is saying one word, you might say two words. If the child is saying two words, you might say three words. So if the child says a car, then you might say a red car or a car driving or a car crash. <laughs> so you add in one word to what they're saying. That's a good rule. You can add in a little bit more. But yeah, one word is a good rule of thumb to think about that. So you you observe, you wait, you listen. Then you can think about the five finger rule and you can add a word to what your child is saying. And during all of this, you can see that you are not asking many questions because often adults ask too many questions and we put the, we know that asking lots of questions puts pressure on the child and it makes them feel like they're being tested and it makes them feel like, oh, I don't know the answer to that. It makes them feel a bit stressed and it doesn't give the child the opportunities they need to learn the words because they don't hear the words. All they hear is the questions. So questions test, comments teach. So here are some questions on our slides like what's that? What's this called? What's this? Instead of that, I want you to comment or say what you can see. So it might be things like oh, the car is red. Oh no, the car has crashed. Zoom, zoom, fast car. So instead of asking questions, say what you can see or comment and describe what you can see. So reduce questions, increase comments. And I know that that is really hard to start with, but as you get more practice and as you get more used to it, it is it's really good and becomes easier. So that is a really important thing to remember because often we ask children lots and lots and lots of questions. So if you notice you're asking children lots of questions, try and reduce your questions and increase comments about what you can see them doing and what you can see them touching. OK. So to have a watch about this and to learn more about this, we have found a great video from Tiny Happy People. Um, and I want you to have a watch of that now. So the video, the link to the video is in the, the little description below this video. So have a watch of that video now. And while you're watching that video, have a think about the communication strategies that the adults in the video are using and why, why they're doing it and what is good about it. Have a watch of that video now and then come back to me. OK, so once you watch the video, um, hopefully you've got down some ideas about what communicate, what communication strategies they are using. We thought that they were using great communication strategies. The dad is pointing out things to his little girl. She, he's describing what she can see, like the duck, the swans. And he, she, the girl, is saying one word and he is adding more words to make a sentence. So in that video, they're doing beautiful commenting and beautiful saying what they can see. And they are asking a few questions, but just not too many questions. And that's really important. Have a feel free to have a watch of that video again. And there's lots of other resources on Tiny Happy People, lots more videos uh, that you can watch to get more ideas and more, uh, yeah, more inspiration for different things to do with your children. It's a great resource. OK, so now thinking about understanding, how can you help children develop their understanding of language? So the first thing is to get your child or the child you works with name before attention before saying their name. So always make sure you try and get their attention before speaking to them and make sure you're on their level when you are speaking to them. Try and keep your language as simple as you can. That is important. Um, break down longer instructions into parts or chunks. So try not to give lots and lots of instructions in one go. Try and break it down into little sections. So let the child do one part and then give them another one. 
and then let them give them another one and then let them do it. So break it into little chunks. And make sure you give your instructions in the order that you want them done. So you say first get dressed, then get your shoes. So put them in the order that you want the instructions carried out. And show your child what you mean wherever possible. So wherever you can, use gesture, use your hands, use your face, use pictures, use objects wherever you can to show them what you mean. So at snack time, you might hold up a carrot and a banana and you say you choose, you get them to choose between the objects rather than just saying the word. Or you show them a picture of where you're going or you show them um, the choice of different objects. So wherever you can, show them what you mean. And using your hands is a really good way of doing that. If you know any Makaton signing, then that is a really great thing to use as well, because adding a gesture or a movement to a word helps a child understand what you're trying to say even more. I always say to parents and staff, you need to use your hands more than you ever thought possible when you're talking with children because it helps them learn language. So you might say things like, you put your coat on. Do you want to go outside? Should we go to the park and have some fun? And I just use gesture. I use my body wherever I can to help the child understand me. So those are our tips for understanding. Now, developing sentences. So if children are using um, little sentences already or they're putting some words together, here are some ideas to increase and develop those sentences. So remember to try and add in action words, verbs or doing words into your child's sentences. So we every sentence in the English language has to have a verb or a doing word in it, a word ending in ing or in an action word. So children need to develop those words as well because that helps them form sentences. So you can label actions that you are doing and that's really helpful. So we're walking in the park. Oh, Daddy is eating a sandwich or Hannah is jumping on the trampoline. So you can label what people are doing and that helps them increase their vocabulary and add in new ones to their new ones to their vocabulary. If your child has got lots of action words already, you can add in more complicated ones. You could add in more, more descriptive, more higher level ones. Like instead of walking, you could say marching or striding or strolling or wandering. <laughs> Many possibilities. And you could also sing action songs like wheels on the bus or this is the way we those things. You could also do activities that need them to put things in order and talk about it. So we call these activities sequencing activities. So things that require you to do things in an order. So like making a cup of tea or making a sandwich or drawing something. So you can do what we call plan, do, review. So you can plan, talk about what you're going to do, do, do it, do it together, review, and then review what you did. So you can plan it, do it, talk about it. And that way you are helping your child put things in order and sequence activities and that helps them with their communication development because it helps them understand that things need to be done in the right order and therefore when you have a conversation or when you tell a story or when you say what you did at the weekend it helps them know how to put things in order so those kind of sequencing activities are really great Okay, so those are some top tips on developing more sentences and adding in vocabulary for your child. We've got lots more on our Facebook page, so check it out if you would like. So now let's think about what support is available. So these are some useful websites and campaigns that are um, yeah, very useful to look at if you'd like more information. Um, our Facebook page has got lots of hints and tips every week. Um, also, the Tiny Happy People campaign, which is the video that we watched during this webinar. They have so many resources and videos and ideas and things that you can do. Um, so definitely check them out. And the Hungry Little Minds campaign is also brilliant, as is the Small Talk and the NSPCC campaign as well. And then ICANN is also a brilliant 
website to check out if you want more resources, particularly if you're a practitioner. So have a look at those if you are interested after today. And now I just want you to think about one thing that you might have learnt from today's webinar and maybe one thing you might do now to support children's talking. So just have a think about that and maybe write that down if you've been making notes or just think to yourself one thing that you might have learned and one thing you might do to support children's talking. Once you've thought about that, it would also be great if you could complete our two minute survey to let us know what you thought of today's training. Um, you'll find the link to the survey in the description of this video if you scroll down. Um, your feedback is really important to us because it means that we can continue to make these workshops freely available online. So we're really grateful for your feedback and I promise it takes two minutes. Thank you so much in advance for filling it out. And then lastly, if you would like to get in touch with us, if you live or work in Ealing, then we have our advice line, which is open every day or Monday to Friday, 1 to 4 p.m. Um, the number and the website is on the screen there. Feel free to get in touch if you have any questions. And if you are looking for any more trainings about speech, language and communication, here is a list of our other workshops that are free to watch online. Um, I think particularly relevant for this training might be the using stories to support children's talking, um, which is currently running on Zoom. So if you are on a practitioner in Ealing or a parent in Ealing, you can book on via CPD online or if you're a parent by dropping us an email. Um, hopefully that one will be running on YouTube soon. So watch this space. If you would like any more information about the webinars or have any questions, feel free to get in contact with us if you're in Ealing or beyond. We'd love to hear from you. So that is my last slide and that is our last um, talking point of today's training. It was absolutely love you, lovely to have you all with us. So we really hope you enjoyed today and I hope you found it useful. Thank you in advance for filling out this survey. Um, I hope you enjoyed the webinar and we will see you soon. Have a lovely day. Bye.